Oh, Aaron's got some too. Oh, we got photos being taken. Yeah, we're our, our, our PR person's here, so that's perfect. <laughs> Heck yes. Well, guys, thanks for uh, for having me in. No problem. This is uh, this is very exciting. Um, I'm having a BKD's beer. Exactly. What is what is this that I'm drinking? That is, uh, it is made for us out of Colorado okay. by uh, Odell's, and uh, it is the BKD's Lager. You can buy it in the stores Delicious. under the name Nail Knot by can Odell's. You really? Nail okay. Knot, yeah. Nail Knot? Okay. Yeah, we brand it. That's what they call it, but we brand it BKD's here. Yeah. It's a $3 uh, 16-ounce pint. Uh, you can get it all the time here. Three dollars. So three dollars, man. Dang, that's a we, good deal. We make and it's a great beer. You know, it it uh, fits right in there as a lager, a light beer. Goes good with every game and every meal. Every game and yes. every meal. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, meal specifically, Mark. Mm-hmm. You were saying that uh, that uh, I beer brian the uh, chicken wings in in the, in the beer, so get all that great flavor. Uh, your your wings are okay as well. You know, I had them last time I was here. <laughs> oh, I was blown you, away. If yeah. we're talking about the beer too, we got to keep in mind we uh, use that for our hand battered uh, fresh Atlanta cod on our fish fry on Fridays. Okay. And the newest item that we had added recently is the uh, beer battered asparagus fries, Ooh. and that is used with the BKD's beer as all as well. So uh, yeah, getting those flavors in there because nothing like a great again a great lager. I agree. Yeah. I agree, and it's not uh, it's not bready. Like sometimes no. the lagers are kind of a little too malty, a little Correct. too. Yeah, this is good, man. Three and it's not watered down. It's not like no. some of the light beers that you know you taste like water. Yeah, you know? so yeah, yeah. I'm, it's I'm got flavor. Pretty happy I live where I live. <laughs> good. Those things are three dollars. <laughs> no, meaning like far away. I yeah. Brandon, yeah. Oh like, yeah. I w- you know I, I kind of think like I wish I would live closer because we're going to get into mm. uh, chef's food, but. Uh, but three dollar of these, I, that I need to live further away. Definitely. So I, so I can't. Twelve dollars <laughs> for for a uh, growler. We do growlers to go too of all our beers. We got twenty four oh, nice. taps. So excellent tap yeah. list, by the yeah. way, too. Absolutely. I'm a Great. beer guy. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, let's 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 back up a little bit. So, uh, well, first of all, like I said, thanks guys for having me mm-hmm. in, and we, we've been working on this for a little bit, and um, I'm stoked to be here. So. Same here. Thanks Thank for you. coming. We're down. excited to have you. Yeah. Well, taste uh, of AZ, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. We're and a big the, taste of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that we would have a full spread here, Chef. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll do that later, right? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think people <laughs> want to hear us licking our lips in the microphone. <laughs> no. No, I agree. I agree. Well, but we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely share afterwards. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> it sounds good. Well, let, let's let's start back. Let, let's start with you, Brandon. Are you where are you from originally? Well, I'm originally from my dad, and okay. then my mom, okay. and then Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Third. So one, two, three. Yeah. All right. All and right. Uh, <laughs> and then when I was 13, moved to Arizona and okay. uh, and started a life here in uh, in the music business. You know, I played ah. keyboard so in the 80s. You know, the big hair bands did yeah. all that, and uh, realized uh, making it in the business uh, is tough. It's like okay. winning the lottery. Sure. Um, but being in the business, there were so many opportunities behind the scenes. And so I went to school, learned recording, and I moved to L.A. and, and recorded with some of the uh, top artists that a lot of people may or may not know. Um, and Depending then, on uh, the age, is that what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it went from uh, Rick James, uh, Lita Ford, and Perry Farrell when he started Porno for Pyros. Uh, so a couple of those. Uh, before coming back to Phoenix and, and working in the nightclubs and in the okay. bar scene and doing um, sound and lights for, and then eventually managing bands before stepping up and uh running one of the biggest uh venues in town which is the auction pavilion for many years or oh, okay. cricket pavilion or yeah. ashley furniture home store pavilion or blockbuster <laughs> desert sky <laughs> many many names of it uh twenty thousand seat outdoor amphitheater and then we built one in albuquerque uh 22 years ago and was running that and uh at the end of the day uh to me music started to get a little stale because it was the same bands there hasn't been any new breakout i think since uh the iphone's been invented so 2001 uh, yeah. you know do, do you relate to two of those uh, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> a little bit uh the seattle scene the grunge i yeah. think was the last you know besides maybe like a corn and lincoln park where they had you know the scratch djs into the heavy metal um, there hasn't really been anything new and inventive. So, That's true. Um, That's very true. In order for us to be able to be successful, uh, we had to sell concessions. And so for the last uh, 15 years, I found myself running the largest uh, bar and restaurant in, in the state. Okay. And I uh, thought, well, why can't I go back to doing this? You know, I've got some great friends, great partners. Um, 
BKDs obviously stands for Brandon Kelly Dan. Okay. Uh, and Kelly and Dan own the Melting Pot franchise. I've known them for over 20 years. Uh, Dan even longer. We we had some businesses together. And uh, this came about four years ago when we when we put it together with some struggling um, uh, efforts with the uh, with the current was the current owner who didn't want to sell at the last minute, and then uh, the landlord gave us the opportunity to come in. So uh, we reinvented the space. Uh, then, when shortly after, found Mark, brought him on, made him partner, and uh, we've been chugging along ever since. Making you know? some waves for sure. Yeah, Definitely. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> I, always hearing great stuff, and I see. I see chef's uh, food that he posts, like his brisket meatloaf, and like I'm like, man, oh, it's phenomenal, like, oh, like some incredible, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's really cool about the music. So, I, I, so music is how I started podcasting. It was a buddy of mine uh, that I grew up with in Ohio. He moved to Florida in 05. I moved here in 07. But we always stayed connected with like obscure bands. So I like, dude, did you hear this new band or hear this new band? Um, so music is is kind of my my heart of like creativity. That was nice. like the beginning. Nice. Uh, but I'm not really musically talented. So I was gonna I, say, do you play? You <laughs> I don't play, play a little bit of a guitar. Yeah, gotcha, a little cool. bit. If I pl- if I put a little more time into it, I know I'd be you know better at it. Uh, but I was always more interested in just listening to the music. I was never really a music student. Uh, but uh, so. Yeah, music hits me in the heart, and and that is interesting because there hasn't been anything like innovative. Like everything is, is uh, there was a huge revival, right? right? Huge revival of like bluegrass and folky type of stuff, but that's just a resurgence of something that's already been there, right? Right. right. So mm-hmm. nothing new has come out. That's, I thought it was my old age. No, I thought, I, I, so I thought <laughs> I, mean, I was just like, oh, nothing's good anymore. <laughs> I always go back to to some of the kids today. They, they mentioned their bands, and uh, and I'll ask them, oh, who sings? You know, and most of them know the singer, but then who plays bass? Who yeah. plays drums? Like there's no there's no star in that. It's all yeah. manufactured. And I still dabble in the business. I have a recording studio and, and still uh, work with a couple artists. I work with singers now because it's easier than working with a whole band. Okay. Um, and um, you find you know shows like American Idol and and uh, you know, America's Got Talent or whatever. And these shows uh, are are just producing a singer, and there's no no one's you know paying the price of playing the clubs like we did when we were yeah. young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, still enjoy you know, recording, finding that uh, work with a couple that that were on a couple of the TV shows. Um, so you know, it's still still a hobby. That's that's my stress relief. I got a piano at home, so yeah. when I'm you know get home, I love to just sit down and just play a couple tunes and just relax. Yeah, well, well that that's a perfect example of like you know you get into an industry. Like I love music. Now I work in the music industry. You're like, but I'm running a, the food and beverage at, at the pavilion, right? right? Like right. it's yeah, it's the industry, but it's not. You're not getting to do. What you love, what you started to do, with correct, it, right? Like correct. Uh, so what now? So what about you, Mark? Are you from Arizona? I'm, originally? A, I'm a native from uh, Mesa. Okay. And I started cooking in 1993 at the Mesa Country Club. Okay. Just down the street from Westwood High School, where I went to high school at, and started as a dishwasher. Kind of paid my dues. Like in two years, two years of dishwashing. Yeah. A country club is is, is a lot of work. I say that's a lot of time, long time to be washing some dishes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I was I was under a, a master chef, like a, an awesome chef, and he kind of was like teaching me stuff as we, as I was a dishwasher, and okay. then it took me two years. But he was a, he was a hard chef, and then after that, I I took over, and started doing banquets and weddings and catering and stuff like that. So then I learned how to use a knife, cut, um, cook. Do some pastries, and then after that, I kind of moved on to doing restaurant stuff because I really enjoyed cooking and 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 putting a plate in front of somebody and having them smile and say, "Oh, this is really good." And so yeah. that, that makes my day, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like just from there, I just cooked all the way up until now. Like I've been a chef at Rigatoni's, I've been a chef at Ginger Monkey for a little while. Um, okay. So I just kind of went through my way to where I am at now and 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 these guys gave me an opportunity to be a partner and it's just you know this is a great place to be at and yeah. I love it here and I and I count these guys as my brother so it's just that's great it's just a, we make a great team and and we have big goals and plans which which we want to be one of the best around you know what I mean so yeah yeah well I mean backyard joint I mean how can you not love that <laughs> right, right? I love right? that but people are asking like hey where are you doing a podcast uh, today I'm like backyard BKD's backyard joint I'm like what let's name them like yeah oh yeah I love exactly. it exactly yeah. exactly well, well, now, so was there like early in your life like you know you kind of started with your teenage years but was food always a part of, of, of your life like you know, like my grandmother my my dad's mom was 
huge influence on like my food. Actually, love um, for food. My mom was a really great cook, but a lot of times with circumstances, we were kind of homeless and poor. So okay. I, I grew up in the shelter a lot and stuff yeah. like that. And I just, you know, I was just there in high school. I just was kind of looking for a job. And then when I went into the restaurant business, I just fell in love with it. Yeah. And, yeah. You, know, you know, I have family members saying, oh, well, I never thought you would be a cook when we were young because I was in sports. I was a basketball player. I ran cross country. So I always wanted yeah. to be a Phoenix Suns player. But, yeah. <laughs> but my life took me in another direction, which I'm really happy about. Yeah. Um, and my mom, you know, she, she used to make the meatloaf. She used to make this in, um, mac and cheeses and, and all kinds of great stuff. But I just wanted to do my own little twist on it where yeah. we do our home, like our, we do our home style foods here, but we, t- we take it up a notch because we're a sports bar, but we like to be an elevated sports bar. So yeah, yeah. Just kind of put, put our niche into some, some great classics, you know, so. Yeah. Well, you know, bringing yeah. Mark in, uh, Mark was kind of like, uh, uh, like, you know, the NFL team when you bring in that rookie um, uh, quarterback. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you guys are going to the Super Bowl. That's what we got. Are with you Mark. a Bengals fan? Is that what no, you're saying? I'm that? not a Bengals fan. <laughs> I, were you describing the Bengals specifically? <laughs> no, no. But, you know, it's unique how that's happened. You know, this yeah. is this is our third year. Uh, Mark's been with us for over two and a half now. Yeah. And um, and without him, you know, we wouldn't have thrived, you know, because the, the, the service, uh, the TVs, the, the taps, um, you know the food. It, you got you got to have everything. You yeah. Know, just like that that Super Bowl team. You got to have the running back. You got to have the coaches. You got to have the players. Yep. Um, and if not, if not if everything isn't hitting on all you know four eight six cylinders whatever you have, um, you know you're not going to get there. Yeah. And uh, yep. and so we constantly are, are looking at every area to tweak. And uh, and that's you know like I said in, in late. Uh, November, we came out with the new menu. Uh, Mark upgraded some things, oh, okay. and uh, and it's just you know it's taken another um, you know taking us to another level uh, yeah. with the new food that's been added. Nice. Yeah, nice. we um like you know like even with like the pictures of the food, where I have like a little studio on the back. You know, we got to like show it's like kind of showing off your food, but it's like yeah. kind of like showing your your passion on a plate. And it's like yeah. So you take a picture of it, and then you get it out there, and you have like different local foodies coming in and, and doing their TikToks, Instagrams, Facebook, and stuff like that, which helps out a lot. Yeah. And then yeah. we have our, our um, BKD's Facebook page, which we use. And, you know, it's just it's just getting our, our, our name out there because we're kind of like a hidden gem because yeah. we're like in a, in a plaza and we, we fill up, you know, we, we yeah. get busy in here. We like to be maxed out. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's just an awesome ride. and. and well, how did you how did you come across this 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 fine gentleman here? <laughs> you know what? Well, I had to say uh, Dan Dan had uh, met up with him and uh, knew he was in a spot that uh, he wasn't allowed to spread his wings, and uh, so we brought him over here and and uh, and like he said, you know, we gave him full reign of the kitchen. We said, look, we're going to roll the dice. You know, you go ahead and reinvent everything and let's yeah. launch a menu. And he put it together, and people were blown away, and then. You know, then it was like, okay, well, what are we going to do next? So we started yeah. doing some specials. Um, those specials then became, uh, instead of daily specials, they ca- became permanent on the menu. Okay. Uh, and then it's like, okay, well, now let's, you know, let's reset the menu and let's really take it to the next level. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where we're at now. Uh, and now Mark's got some time to start working on some new specials uh, mm. for the next menu. So. Um, beer dinners too. We're gonna do beer dinners. Ooh, yes, uh, big I think time. You need an expert uh, beer podcast to uh, <laughs> highlight these beer dinners. <laughs> well, this uh, not sure when this podcast will air, but this Thursday, February seventeenth, we're teaming up with uh, the Phoenix Beer Company and, and oh, doing nice. a uh, four pairing with some of their beers. Ah, oh, that's and excellent. I love those guys. Definitely. Yeah, and we've done some uh, in the past with uh, Mother Road, and uh, we've done one with uh, Helton Brewery and. Uh, believe we done one with santan mm-hmm. was it yeah okay. so nice so they uh, they always go over good you know we have about 30 40 people that come and mark puts together uh, uh, an appetizer two meals and a uh, dessert that pairs with the beers and uh, people love them and it gets gets some knowledge out on the beers that we have um and gives people an opportunity to taste some of the other things that uh, chef can create out of the kitchen get to play yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. Get to play. yeah. <laughs> i saw the smile on his face right like, i love you yeah <laughs> well so do you uh was you know using beer or or i guess beer specifically using it in your food has that always been a, a thing that you've enjoyed oh i've enjoyed oh yeah it's like it's just it's a way to t- it's another take of of how we could incorporate beer in our food and yeah. then and then uh the the 
the line be finding what food goes with what beer, you know what I mean? So it's just, yep. it's just a lot of tasting, making different things, but when you come to it, to what you want to do, and then you have your beer dinner, it's just, it's a hit, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. Because I used to do, when I was at Rigatoni's, I was a chef over there, and I started doing wine dinner, so I was pairing wine with foods, yeah. but for, but I like doing that, but for some reason, I like really doing it with the beer, because that's who yeah. I am. I have a beer after work, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not, yeah. I, I'll drink wine, but more of a beer drinker, so yeah. this is this is a lot of fun for me. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And, and the creative ways that people are able to use beer in, you know, whether it's in, you know, as like the, the liquid for a soup or a stew or chili or something or brine or, but yeah, I, I love any chance I can yeah. to throw a beer into some food. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. So when, so when you, when you came on board here, uh, chef did, and, uh, you had a little bit of freedom to, to, you know, express yourself. Uh, what, what did you? What were some of the things that you came in saying? I want. I really want to make this. Well, I'm, I'm, I like short ribs, so I kind of okay. try to talk to the guys. Hey, let's just do a short ribs, and then we talked about doing a meatloaf. But then instead of just doing your basic meatloaf, we use brisket. Yeah. And then and then these guys allowed me to get, um, or they we brought in a smoker, and then it's, it's, it was like. The, the Christmas present of all time. You know yeah. I mean? it's like, <laughs> because it's like, okay, now I have a smoker, man. Like, you know, my mind's like, yeah. like a lot of, a lot of bolts going through there. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I could do this. We could do that. We could do that. So we smoked our lollipops. We smoked our brisket. Um, we have pork. You know, we do a different take on our brisket too, because I use a different rub that nobody really uses. Okay. So everybody's like, oh, man, we love the flavor. What do you do here? Like we actually have barbecue places around us ordering our brisket and ribs. So they could try to figure it out. No shit. Yeah, but it's like I'm not, you gonna, you, you're not going to share. No, this, you know? <laughs> we don't. We don't share nothing. <laughs> but they but they it. order the food and they try it like, yeah. why is what like why is a, a barbecue place ordering twelve racks of ribs? Yeah. Why are they ordering trying to order a whole prime rib that we smoke? You know what I mean? Yeah. How when does they that have make it themselves, it makes me feel good. Yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> man. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we. It's, it's just it's, it's fun for me. It's, it's fun to have our unique flavors and our unique way of doing things here, which puts us among everybody else, like different from everybody else, because we don't want to yeah. be like everybody else. We want to have have our own way of doing things, and and I think that's that's our niche here. Yeah. Just like with the owners, with their drinks and our service and and, and our bartenders and the way we do everything here is just. It's just it's just a good great way of running a business and 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 showing who we are. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems like it's created a really great, like, a neighborhood spot, too, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely. the name itself just, just screams neighborhood, you know. Oh, yeah. It's backyard joint. I mean, you got the big space inside. Then you have this big patio outside. You Correct. got pool tables. Uh, it definitely seems like a very, very community uh, yeah, neighborhood we, thing. We came in and, and realized that there's uh, a regular base that was already here, um, and that's why it's a it's a neighborhood joint. Was it all, um, So it was, a, it was a, a, a similar establishment before? Somewhat, uh, it okay. was more heavy on the bar side, not so much the food. Okay. Um, there was a couple, uh, I think, two franchise sports bars prior. Um, but, but again, coming in and realizing, look, you know, you can put a bar on every corner. It doesn't mean it's going to be successful or not. Sure. Everyone can have, you know, mm -hmm. a bunch of TVs and a bunch of uh, beers on tap. Um, but what is it? What is it? You know, what makes you go back there? Yeah. And, and again, being in the music business, I mean, we all can relate to uh, music. You know, your your breakup song, your first love song, the <laughs> yes, wedding absolutely. song, yep. the song when you got to get amped up to do something. You know, if you're in if it, you're in sports, you know, what song are you coming out to? Yeah. You know, I'm gonna play and throw Metallica the ball. Metallica one. That was exactly. Mine. <laughs> and so you can relate to that. So you know, taking that and going, well, how do we how do we make that so that this is an emotional spot too? You come yeah. here and you're like. You know, I had a birthday here. I had we did karaoke with you know some friends here. You know, we had uh, wedding receptions on the patio. Um, we, you know, we don't charge to play pool. So if you want to come and hang out and play pool, you're not getting charged. You know, whatever it is, twenty five, fifty, seventy five a dollar. I don't know what they charge nowadays, yeah. <laughs> but it's always free. Yeah, um, like you can bring your dog. You know, our our, our patio's pet friendly, so you yeah. can bring your dog and hang out. Uh, we don't charge for the uh, UFC fights that are pay-per-view on the, on the Saturdays. Okay. Um, so, you know, we try to make it so people know they can come here, hang out. It's a family establishment. A lot of people bring their kids. A lot of people, uh, it, it's a dinner spot. It's a lunch spot. It's a brunch spot. Um, it's not, you know, a, a, the old days of the smoky sports bar. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so we really looked at how we can do that, and, and we're in a center that doesn't have an anchor. I mean, there's not a big box in here. 
Uh, so we really are. We're, we're just a mile off of downtown Chandler where the Strip is. And so a lot of our folks, you know, that they don't do the bar hopping or whatever. They come in here because it literally is like a Cheers bar. Yeah. You know, there's a group of regulars, and we know what day they come in. We know what they drink. Um, and word of mouth through them and then all of our social media. Yeah. Um, but again, it's, it's finding what, what draws that customer in um, because we're not your typical sports bar. Right. Um, we're right. a restaurant first. That we always like to say that we're a restaurant first, and we oh, and oh, by the way, we have TVs and taps. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, <laughs> I like that though, great. right? Yeah. Because right. that 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 I, I think that shows uh, a level of care. Uh, because you can just be like, yeah, hey, we got the sports on. Like you're gonna eat whatever the hell we got. Right. right. Sorry that beer's flat, but you want one or not? <laughs> right. <know>? Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. Can I have all of it? Right. Can right. I, you know, can I have a spot that is you know you can watch? Can, I mean, this probably highlights how non-observant I am sometimes. I'm super impressed by the way those TVs are. Uh, oh, yeah. and, you know, I don't see it. You don't see it like that very mm-hmm. often, right? It's like a, a, a cascading Every row angle. of... T- yeah. That's what everyone says. No matter where you're sitting, you can see something. Comfortably. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have 10 uh, direct TV receivers, four Cox receivers, cable receivers, two internet channels. Um, so we, And we have every package. So literally, we can put anything on. And, and the way our uh, rooms are set up, the patio and the bar have two separate audio systems. So we can put one game with the audio outside and a fight on the inside, which we have done on a yeah. Saturday when the, the playoffs were coming. Uh, it, and it works out great. So no one has to sit where they, their show is. We can yeah. put the show on once they sit down. And people love that because, yeah. you know, you go on most bars, you're like, okay, where's the TV say that this is on and that's on? And, oh, there's no room. And. I won't see it. Can you change this? No, all these people are watching this. Yeah. That don't happen here. You sit down and you tell us what you want. There's plenty of TVs that you can see wherever you sit, and we'll find it. one and put your, your game on or your show <laughs> on. So, I yeah. love it. I love it. And, and so you get, you get sat down, you get a view of the TV no matter where you're at, and then you start to smell that smoke from the smoker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> so I, I got to back up a little bit because I'm kind of a, I, I don't want to say a geek on, on the smoking stuff because I don't, I don't want to put the effort into it. Sure. I like to do it myself. So I have like a switch Traeger smoker, like super easy. Uh, but I really love uh, hearing what, what people use for smoking, right? So what, what, do, you, what, what do you got back there? Well, we have uh, pellet smokers, and, okay. and what I do is I like so open pellet smoker. I'm like myself. I like yeah. it. I like it. <laughs> we have I have like everything like by time. You know what I mean, okay. like like I'll, I'll I'll smoke for a certain amount of time, then I'll wrap it for a certain amount of time, and then I do my flavors or I'll beer brine a certain amount. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a method of everything I do back there. It took me a while to figure the method out, but once I got that method, then yeah. it's, it's the same exact way every time. So and wood flavors too. You got wood flavors too. Yeah, we got different wood flavors. Like I have okay. cherry, or I have a competition blend. I like to use mesquite. Yeah, just like you know, different like the smoke the prime smoke prime rib will get a, a flavor, or lollipops will get a. Apple, apple wood. cherry wood yeah. smoke Ooh, nice. flavor. You know, yeah. just, so there's there's different ways for each one that we do too, yeah. which are, which is 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 a unique flavor in its own way of, of how I want to do it. So yeah, yeah. And then you get people coming in and say, hey, I, I tried the brisket this time. I'm gonna come back and try the the pork, or they'll come back and try the meatloaf. So like, we capture them with the first item on the menu. Then they have to come back and keep trying it out. <laughs> yeah. You spoil us every time we go somewhere else to eat. It's not the same. Yeah. So we, we get that. Like, we'll be driving by BKDs, and all of a sudden we have that flavor in our mouth of the brisket. So they'll have to come in and get the French dip. You know what I mean? And, you know, as a, as a chef, you know, you basically live in the kitchen, right? Yep. You, yeah. and, and when you run a business, you live in the business. Uh, well, we were fortunate that, you know, with technology, the smokers that we got are, are Bluetooth, too. Oh, nice. So uh, Mark can monitor and run that. When he's not here, yeah. he's got it on his phone where yep. he's like, okay, he's calling down here to his second in charge. Hey, you got to take this out of the smoker or here I'm oh, going to put this nice. on a little longer. Yeah. So, so he's got the technology to, mo- to manage it yeah. when he's not even here. That's good. So, yeah. Well, well and, and plus it's it's uh, the the a pellet type smoker is perfect because it's not like you're a barbecue spot where every single thing you're doing is on that smoker, right? right. Where all that time and attention could be. That's it. Everybody pay attention to this thing. That's you know, you've got all kinds of other things going on back yeah. there. Yeah, you know? like a lot of multitasking going on. A lot yeah. of like trying to gauge of. I got pork in this one. I have chicken in this one. Then I have to do brisket after I pull out this. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's all about timing and, yeah. and everything. But, 
it's fun. I have a good time with it. <laughs> yeah. And we did it. You know, bringing it in, when you're bringing something inside and you're adding that additional labor, too. I mean, we looked at, you know, the flame and the logs and all that stuff. But to study some of those championship smokers and some of those those tournaments and festivals they do. Yeah. Uh, and to realize that uh, a lot of these guys are using... Um, pellet smokers and they're hiding them in their tent because they don't want the competition to know and yeah. they're not sitting there you know for four hours you know yeah. getting the getting the wood ready and getting the ash ready and all that stuff right. and then getting ready to smoke it and taking all that time no they know how to do it and yeah. so you know we we incorporated that and said look it cuts out a lot of time yep. it gets better flavor yep. and uh and mark's more become a pro yeah, yeah mark's consistent. become a pro yeah. at it so and i like to use different woods too right because i just get for me at home i get the blend of like so, everything tastes the same as far as the smoke. Right. So, uh-huh. but smoke makes a huge difference depending on what you're what you're making. Oh yeah, like like he brought in a smoker just so he could do a drink too. He has like a smoke whiskey, right? Yep. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Nice. We have a, really- a new one at the bar, so we've got a uh, applewood chips, and we do a uh, smoked old fashioned. Which uh, I'll, I'll prepare and let you sample uh, before the end of today. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to, I will. Yeah. <laughs> well, so th- so that's a piece of it then too, right? I mean, you got the great tap list. That's what it, well, the first time I came in, uh, I was very impressed with the tap list. Uh, but cocktails as well. Correct. That's a big yeah. piece of this. Yeah? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're always uh, looking for things to add. Uh, again, pairing up with our food. Uh, there's a lot of uh, breakfast and dessert shots that we do. Um, you know, there's a, there's a new, you know, a lot of people go out, like the younger crowd will order the green tea shots, or if you have a big sporting event. Well, we have an orange tea. Uh, Jameson came out with an orange um, whiskey now, and uh, and people are loving it. So we an sell that. Tea a shot? ton of that. Yeah. Very good. Very yeah. good. I need to come down for a fight night. I think it was oh, what yeah. it is. Yeah. And, and, uh, you got to try our brunch, too. Our brunch is really good. <sighs> I'm going to have to just get a, a, a rental property down this way. There you way. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, why, so uh, once again, right, like, you know, your sports bar um, to have elevated, you got the food, elevated beer, and now elevated cocktails. Correct. Could have been easy to just do some, well, drinks, right? Correct. Some, what are they called? And we have it? that, too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But, you know, you want, you want to make sure that uh, when the customer comes in, they can get not just the sports package, not just the draft beer, not just the cocktail, um, you know, not just the menu, and even if they want to modify it, yeah. um, you know, it, it's truly a, it's a place for our customers. Yeah. You know, we're not like this is all you get or we're only this. Yeah. Um, we, that's why we, in the sports realm, we didn't want to, you know, pigeonhole us into being, you know, this type of a bar, you know, this type of a, a place. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you can see, we keep it really neutral in here. Um, you know, we do support the, the local uh, high school football teams. Um, okay, nice. And, and that, you know, is, is, again, part of the community support. Um, but as far as coming in to watch something, you don't have to feel that you're coming in and you're in a, you know, the, the competitor uh, bar. Yeah. And you're a Cardinals yeah. fan or a Colts fan and you're, you know, in a Steelers bar or something yeah. like that. You know? Yeah. 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 Unnecessary tension, right? Correct. Correct. <laughs> uh, so... Where else was I going to? There was something else that. Uh, the cocktails. The, yeah. the cocktails. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, what What are some of the signature cocktails? Like so uh, you got the smoked, old fashioned. Yeah, we have the smoked old fashioned. Uh, like I said, a lot of our shots. We have a uh, breakfast shot that we do. Uh, it's a. You said a, a breakfast shot. Breakfast shot. Like yeah, the, the it's a brown sugar words. bourbon. <laughs> so it's really good. It's a brown sugar bourbon. Uh, it's got a slice of bacon in it. Uh, that's really good. Uh, we have a peanut butter and jelly shot. Um, we have uh, a bit of honey. Um, you mean, I mean, there's just so many. I, mean, I go off that whole list. There's yeah. so many. You you think of a flavor, and uh, and our bartenders can make it up. Nice. You know? So yeah, that's good. Uh, so I don't know if you ever. It, this might be something you might be working on. But the, what is it? The uh, brisket fat washed old fashioned. I had one of the. It was like a. What's the play? A Hush. I don't know if you've been to Hush Public House. Yeah. Um, he does a, it's like the, the pork fat from okay. like the brisket and a little miss barbecue. And they do some sort of pork fat wash with their whiskey. Wow. So you have this smoked old fashioned and it, it you get you like that brisket. It. It's, it's good, pretty huh? incredible. Yeah. Wow. That'd be fun to try. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's there you go. It's a really cool experience. Yeah. I've never I mean, heard that. That's stuff, awesome. Yeah. I mean, we might have to call it the tap that yeah. something. Or yeah, taste yeah. <laughs> hey, I think so. We might just have a new drink. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, well, so so what's the what's the what's the vision here? Like, what is the what's the the big picture? Five years from now, where does where does BKDs want to be? You know what? Right now, uh, we're pulling from all over the valley. Uh, impressed with people that come from Surprise, Sun City, Anthem, um, you know, uh, Avondale. Uh, and even, you know, around here, you know, you got people from Mesa that are coming down and, and everybody wants that second location. Yeah. Um, we're really hoping to put something in the Northwest Valley, something around maybe Lake Ple- Pleasant area. Uh, uh, I and, like the sounds of that. That's, I'm at 19th and Joe Max. So there I mean, you go. Right there. Yeah. Closer. <laughs> to cover the Northwest Valley and to have, you know, this corner and then the North corner and then see how the growth goes and yeah. then start filling in, you know, the, the Central Valley. Yeah. Uh, with the, the right spots um, and you know hopefully uh, getting the the branded uh, name and some of the items uh, back into the you know the arenas or the uh, concert venues or the stadiums you know okay. getting getting inside there uh, we want to be careful because obviously you get out to the masses but we want to make sure that the quality you know doesn't suffer and it doesn't sure. become a concession item yeah um, yeah so that's, then you come uh, full circle, right? right? Now you're running concessions exactly, again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, that's that's the vision. You know, to start uh, to start growing and multiplying. You know, we've gotten good at this location. Um, there's only a little bit more growth, and it's happening around us. So yeah. there's some stuff coming into the center. There's some uh, additional homes. There's only about I think a study just came out said there's only about seven percent left. Uh, of, of land space in Chandler. So there's not much additional growth to happen out here. Okay. Uh, so for us to grow, you know, we're going to have to, you know, get a second location yeah. and, and be outside of this. And like yeah. I said, going far northwest, um, we get people all the way from Lake Pleasant coming out here to have a meal once a week. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you'll drive an hour just to <laughs> eat? Uh, we got something here. Let's, yeah. let's look at putting some Absolutely. over there and, and imagine what we'd capture uh, on that side of town. Um, and yeah. I'm a former West Sider. I mean, I lived out there for a long time. Uh, so I, I appreciate the business. My daughter lives out there and, and watching the growth. And when she's telling me, uh, you know, it's a 45-minute wait on a Tuesday to eat at a chain restaurant, uh, that tells yeah. you they're, they're underserved and it's a great opportunity for, for us. So Absolutely. that's what we're looking for. I dig it, man. I dig it. Well, because a lot of times you have to uh, to come into an environment like this, there are compromises you got to make, right? right? Where it's like, hey, all right, the game's on, but uh, we're probably going to get diarrhea from the wings, but whatever. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Not saying here. No, no, no that was right. Yeah, but like there's compromises that you got. All right, all right, this place is really good. They got really good beers on draft, but there's like one big TV and who knows what game. Right. right. There's so, a give and take at your yeah. Some of those places, and yeah. it seems like you guys are putting all the all the positive uh, pieces in the right spot uh, yep. to, to highlight everything. Right, it's yeah. uh, it, it's challenging, you know, as as we all know, the inflation going up, uh, supply chain, you know, keeping consistency um, and, and keeping the prices right. You know, we're not we're not a dive bar. Um, but we're not, you know, uh, at some upscale establishment that it's a black tie. You know, you can right. still come in. It's affordable. You get great quality, great service, great food. Uh, everything's fresh. Like you said, yeah. you're, you're not going in to see your favorite game at some bar because it's loud and rowdy. But, you know, everything's, you know, pre-frozen and just thrown in a deep fryer like yeah. most sports bars. You know, we've got everything you eat has a flavor to it. Not everything tastes the same. Like, there's some bars I've gone to, and, like, every bite, it's like, <laughs> am I eating something different, or is it the same piece of fried something I put in my mouth? Yeah. So, um, so you know, again, we cater to that. Um, you know, our pizzas, you know, he makes the dough fresh in-house. Oh, he makes nice. the uh, sauce fresh in-house. Uh, and, and who doesn't love pizza? I mean... I eat a lot of pizza, and I got to say, our pizza is the best. You know, it, it, yeah. it's my yeah. favorite pizza, and I'm not just saying it because you know I'm here, but you know it really is. Yeah, it really is that good. I didn't know pizza was on the repertoire. Right, right. and so then we nice. have like uh, we get have homemade cheesecakes. We even have a cheesecake following here, which my daughter makes the cheesecakes. Oh, really? She works, yeah, she's a she's my day person. She comes in and, and sets up the cheesecakes so and cool. makes the, all, like a brownie scent. Like we have all kinds of good desserts. Yeah, so we we go that way too. So. I dig it. I, well, Chef, for you, what what is what's the next few years look like as far as like what 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 type of food things do you want to accomplish? Like what what things I think, do you want to? I think with our le- next location, we want to kind of take it even further up, like kind of expand our menu up a little bit. Okay, and maybe like a bigger kitchen, um, more seating area, and just kind of like showcase ourselves even more. Like he said, kind of get maxed out here. Yeah. So like in the future, like kind of like go over there and. And just ex- expand on our craft here and, and okay. what we want to do. I like that. 
yeah just you know do have some fun like we could do beer dinners and actually have space to like do more beer dinners and yeah. more often and yeah so it's just you know just have having fun and, and create and have the creativity to uh, make some new items and and maybe change up the menu some more often yeah. once we get to our next place so I mean, you, whether it stays the same or it's it's improved, I'm in. Yeah, you yeah. know the the family focus. I mean, you know, Mark, as he said, his daughter works here. You know, it's there's there's a family focus. Um, you know, I've got two daughters. My uh, partner Kelly uh, and Dan. Kelly is uh, you know family man, married, two kids. Uh, he's currently running for Congress, oh, nice. and okay. uh, and with Chandler redistricting the area, um, like I said, him and Dan own the melting pot. The one in. Uh, Awatuki and the one up at um, Arrowhead, 59th and the 101. But uh, this new district, too, that he steps into um, would encompass BKD's where he lives and the Awatuki melting pot. Okay. And, uh, and his focus uh, is to help get in there and really clean things up uh, for the future of his kids. And so that's, that's a little bit more of the background. So, uh, you know, you can check him out online, kellycooper.com. Uh, uh, he's running for uh, Congress. And um, he's he's wanting to make a change. He's been in the hospitality business his whole life too, and former Marine. Um, but that's that it really is a bigger picture of what you know we try to do. We're trying to we're not trying to change things. We're trying to make things better. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. while things some things can be you know depending on uh, how you trend on news or social media, you know things look pretty grim out there, and we don't want any of that. You know yeah. we we want things to be. Brighter for the future, brighter for our kids, brighter for customers to come in. Um, so, you know, we start with this place and uh, and then, you know, where can that go? Yeah. You know. I dig it. Yeah. I, dig it. I have one menu recommendation. This is a, this is a, something that I don't get much out here uh, back in Ohio. Uh, chili cheese fries. I don't know if you get oh, like chili oh, cheese yeah. dogs and chili <laughs> cheese fries. Yeah, there has like, been a talk on that. Yeah, that there yeah. Has. Oh man, like I, I, that's that's my thing. My dad came out uh, like a month ago, um, and he, like let's go somewhere have lunch. Uh, we're gonna go to Paddle House. I'm like, what about Detroit Coney? Gee, he's like, I love. He loves there chili cheese go. dogs. Yeah, yeah so uh, an elevated version of mm-hmm, chili cheese. Right. Dog. Just throwing that out there. So we have a uh, <laughs> buffalo chicken uh, fry, loaded fry. Ooh. So it's got buffalo chicken on it with bacon and uh, smothered fries. It is really <laughs> good. That's some of our brunch that just went by. Okay, I, I, those look like that look like French toast with uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah some very compo. That's one of our yeah showcased uh, brunch items. Mascarpone cream. I, I thought you guys were going to help me narrow down what I'm going to have for lunch after this, but now I've got like so five tough. things. I got pizza. <laughs> I've got the lollipop wings. I got you know. <laughs> That's what I love because every day I come in, you know, it, I can eat something different, and there's nothing. You know, you you never get tired of it. Yeah. It's, there's so many good things. So what, you, every what, day. what is what are a couple of your favorites? Like my favorite is the uh, California chicken wrap. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Love that. Um, and then, like I said, the margarita pizza. Um, you know, it, we came up. Uh, Dan Kelly and I came up with our own pizzas on there. So when we put that out, uh, you know, it's bees is the margarita, uh, Kelly's is the meat lovers, and Dan's is the sweetie pie. Yeah. And uh, him and Chef worked together to create the sweetie pie pizza, which people look at it and they kind of tilt their head like what? <laughs> and then they order it and then they're hooked. And it's uh-huh. really a good, good pizza. Yeah. Chef, what is you it? can explain what you got. It has on. Uh, caramelized onions, ricotta, little honey drizzle. Ooh, yeah. honey on sweet. pizza is a, is a, is a very uh, right? amazing thing. Yeah. Right? And I didn't think. Like, no. I was like, Especially uh, caramelized onions and ricotta on yeah. there. Uh, I'm still not a... Bacon, uh, like candied bacon on there, too. Oh, so. okay. I'm yeah. still not a fan of the uh, Hawaiian pie, you know, with the pineapple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but <laughs> when he came out with the sweetie pie, I was like, wow, this, this is something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I said, when people order it, that it becomes their favorite. Yeah. And the tomatoes we use are heirloom tomatoes, so okay. you get the different colored tomatoes, and, and it has a more flavor, I think, than our regular tomatoes. So, and then our salmon. You know, we have an ancho salmon, and mm-hmm. then a uh, salmon Caesar. So, you know, between the salmon, the chicken wrap, and the pizza, you know, that's that's what you'll find me eating. Yeah. Here. <laughs> um, and if and if I've got longer time, I'll dig into the wings. Um, I love our uh, Memphis rub on our wings. I mean, to me, there's nothing like it. Uh, I haven't had it any place that has that flavor of wings. You, can, you know, so many places have wings, but not everyone does it well. Yeah. And um, like Mark said, we smoke our lollipop wings. So it's a French cut wing. It's a drum that uh, they take the wing bone out and fold it over, and it's really like a lollipop. Amazing. So you get a, yeah. a, a big clump of meat there, and and he smokes it, and then to to put it in a dry rub. Uh, there's nothing like it. I think that's what I had last time I yeah, was here. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's what I think I gave you when you were at the bar. Yeah, 
Incredible. And then our homemade ranch. I mean, he makes the ranch in house. And, you know, when you go to some places, some people like watery ranch. I'm not a fan. I like the heavy, creamy ranch. Yeah, yeah. Gonna have Sticks it. to the wind. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. so he, he makes that all in house. And uh, between the ranch and the wing flavors, yeah, yeah. You, you can't go wrong. Well, I think, too, I think if I'm re- recalling correctly, like the, the ramekin that the ranch is in oh, yeah. is like a big ramekin. Yeah. That, so yeah. you can dip that wing yeah. in there. Yeah. Like it wasn't one of those little skinny, no. like where you have to. Like that, that one, I'm like, what is it? Like it's the little things like that. It's like a me. soup bowl, yeah. you know. Because <laughs> if you want to dip that big old wing, you want to dip it yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, not like do one of these no. things. Then, then once you bite one side, like how do yeah. you get that? Yeah, exactly. So nice yeah, we have like those yeah, we have like a good dry rubs. We have a bunch of different sauces yeah. that go on them. So like all of our sauces are from scratch. Um, our dry rubs are our own special seasoning mixes. Like he likes the Memphis seasoning, which is our okay. own mix. Yeah, so, yeah. So. It, you know, the dry rubs are really popular also because it's kind of like, you know, I, I bred the chicken with like a light coat with a flour and some okay. seasoning and, and you get a crispness on them and the, um, and the tenderness in the middle. So when you get the dry rub on them, it just makes them, takes them to another level. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I think too, that creates a, a, a wing that is, uh, almost, you know, I don't want to say shuns, but uh, the sauce, right? Because mm-hmm. everybody, it's all about the sauce. Like, what sauce do you have? Because that can kind of cover up a not so great wing, right. right? I dip a wing into some spicy garlic and some blue cheese. Like, it could be shitty chicken, doesn't matter. It's right, going to taste right. good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So to, that that takes some some you know some balls to say. I'm just going to put the dry rub on there, and I'm going to call it a day. And then yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember mean, having a couple that I'm yeah. like, I'm not dipping this in anything. I'm just yeah. eating this the yeah. way that oh, it yeah. is. That's yeah. how sometimes I don't even put nothing on it. It yeah. doesn't eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> We've yeah. even had, uh, there's um, uh, a wing chain that's out there. Not wing stop, but it's another one. Uh, Alt Wings, I think it is. Oh, that, and yes. we yeah. had uh, three of their franchisees come in. And, and order our wings because they wanted to try some stuff because they're like we heard you guys wings and that's all we yeah. sell and so we yeah. want to see what you get what the, what this is all about and they were from downtown one of them was a brand new franchisee and um, I'm just honored to sit down and talk with them and, and talk shop and yeah and that you know that's their business and they're coming in to, to patronize us because you know they enjoy the wings that we have you know yeah. a little different that's a franchise and we're you know mom and pop in a scratch kitchen yeah but uh, Still, you know, when when you know, if you if you sell wings all day long, do you want to go out for wings? No, no, that's the last <laughs> thing I want to see. And they came in here yeah. and they all ordered wings and they devoured yeah. them. And I was like, man, and they were like, great job. And I'm like, thank you. That speaks a lot from yeah. someone that just sells wings all yeah. day. Yeah, you know? an expert. Well, yeah. it seems like that's that's that kind of seems like a common thread with mm-hmm. you guys. Like people that are that are really into wings or this or that yeah, are coming right. to you guys saying, this is the best one right. I've had in town. Yeah. So yeah. when you have like multiple things at that, that's, that's impressive, like man. You like the barbecue, like they specialize in barbecue, but they're coming and get our barbecue. You know? Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's like, okay. So, <laughs> that's awesome. That's it's, awesome. Yeah. It's, What's it's your awesome. favorite? What's your go-to when you go out? You mean just in general? Yeah. Like what do I, I love pizza. Yeah. Um, I love wings. Uh, I do like Reuben. I think I had a Reuben last time I was here, mm-hmm. right? Um, I love Reubens. Those are kind of my go-to, but I eat everything. Man. Yeah. Like everything except for horseradish. But if someone like oh. Chef puts horseradish on it, I'll eat it. Right, right. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> yeah. you know, it's funny. I, I don't mind spicy or horseradish, but, uh, you know, I guess as a kid, my parents always told me if I got in trouble, like they grabbed the pepper and it was no big deal. And then they grabbed the horseradish and put my mouth and they would get so mad because I was like, oh, that's good, dad. Can I have some more? (laughs) And they would get so mad because they're like, we're trying to discipline you by putting this in your mouth and you're liking it. (laughs) Uh, That would have worked on me, right? Right? Because I hate it. Yeah. Uh, Uh, We should put a horseradish sauce on our... uh, Prime rib on Sundays. Uh, right. See, I would have, and I would try that. Yeah, I, yeah. I would definitely try that. Um, yeah, I, I think there was a bad experience when I was a kid. My mom made some horseradish. Uh, it was like a red horseradish sauce for like some yeah. pasta, and oh, it gotcha. like cleared all of our sinuses. Uh, like we had to open the windows. Like it's uh, <laughs> like uh, having some wasabi. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Uh, but no, you guys are doing a great job. I'm really excited. Uh, yeah, well, you know, to answer your question, like, what do I go for? I yeah. usually go for pizza, wings. The lollipop wings here are fantastic. That, that Reuben I had. So uh, I just, I mean, I'm excited to just keep trying stuff here, honestly. Right. You know, I'm normally a person that 
that really good wings here. I'm gonna get the wings when I go there. Right. Here, I want to try all the stuff. So. Right. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's you. Well, they definitely so. have to get you. <laughs> since you tried the wings in the Reuben, we'll have to get you a pizza. And yeah. then, of course, in a smoked old fashioned too. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can all right, take let's that wrap to this go. thing up. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one with you. It's my day off, so oh, I'm gonna nice, I'm gonna enjoy it with you. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, so to wrap up real quick, so I know, so you got the fights. As it looked like there was trivia. Um, so you guys do a lot of uh, of different things. Yeah, we have a, a Jack Bingo night on Tuesdays. We have a Jack Trivia on, on uh, Wednesdays. We have karaoke on Saturday nights. Okay. Uh, unless there's a UFC fight, and that that takes precedent. Um, and then, like I said, you can always come in and, and ask for, you know, a game, whether it's an Olympic game, a tennis game, a hockey game, a soccer game. Yeah. You know, we got it. So okay. we can nice. put everything on. Um, we even have the ESPN Plus. So, you know, the, the stuff that people are coming in and watching on their tablet, uh, you know, we can we can show here all those highlight nice. stuff. And the Phoenix Open, obviously going on right now on the big screen. Yep. This is the big thing. Got to take my dad out there yesterday and yeah. uh, and, and go and see, uh, you know, the Pro-Am where you go nice. every Wednesday. Um, what a fun time, you know. Yeah. Arizona's blessed to have the major sports teams and to have the weather and, that, and to have events like that. Um, you know, last week we had the, the Bear Jackson was in town. A lot of tours come down yeah. uh, for that. Uh, so it's just it's it's a great mix. It's a great time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any plans for with a music background? Any plans for live music at BKDs? Uh, yeah, we're actually looking at bringing live music back. Uh, nice. Football ends obviously this Sunday. Yep. Um, we'll roll into uh, the the playoffs with uh, basketball, but uh, probably Sunday afternoons uh, we'll probably have uh, some acoustic acts in here nice. and and work on uh, maybe a uh, Bloody Mary bar, you know, some kind of fixing like that. Now that uh, you know. COVID's kind of going away, thank God. Yeah, almost uh, since everybody in the world got it in January. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so we're, we're, you know, it, everything is go time. It, you know, everything looks good ahead, and, and we're happy to be here and continue yeah. on. Like I said, we just celebrated three years, and uh, we look forward to, you know, many, many more. I love it. I love it. Right Keep on. up the good work, guys. Thank yeah, you. appreciate awesome. it. Thanks yeah. for having us. Absolutely. Now the, now the real fun begins. Fashion and pizzas, right? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. Thank you. Thank you.